Hello everybody. Good evening and welcome to the Health Industry Showcase. My name is Naomi, I'm the Head of Health and Social Sciences and I'm here to host this evening's uh, mm -hmm showcase and question and answers. We're going to answer all the questions at the end of our showcase, um, So, but please do start asking them. Thank you. I'm going to hand over now to, to Nicola. Hello, my name is Nicola Thompson, subject lead for early years studies at the college. We offer a wide range of early years education childcare courses from level one to level three and beyond to include the new and exciting T levels in childcare and education. You'll be taught by a team of teachers with professional industry backgrounds to support and guide you to reach your career goal. Our courses offer a range of experiences and work placement elements in the early years sector. Angela. OK, my name is Angela Jarrett. I'm the work placement coordinator for early years. I will organise your placements in many different places. You could be in a nursery, a preschool, a primary school or even a forest school. Um, you will get out and about and do lots of placements over either your one year course or your two year course. We try and get your placements near to home if we can, but some of you may have to travel a little bit. Um, any questions you've got on um, work placements, I'm your person, put them in the box and I'll answer at the end of the session. Over to Natasia. You're on mute. Hello. <laughs> My name is Natasia Scott Puka and I'm a course director in the early years department. The Level 1 Caring for Children provision offers the opportunity to study two qualifications as well as build the eight key character strengths through participating in experiences. Some of these have included the NCS project, which consists of a team building residential weekend, the shoebox appeal for Berry's Women's Refuge, where the Level 1 learners collected essentials for, the, for Christmas presents, the Stowe Market Christmas Tree Festival, where the students made decorations for two trees, as well as um, the students being involved in the Black Panther expedition in Christchurch Mansion. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jo Renshaw Fox and I'm an early years lecturer. Um, and it might seem like a far off pro prospect, but we'd like to give you a brief um, glimpse at how we support your progression beyond our level three learners. Um, it's worth thinking a bit further ahead if you're planning to have a career working with children and their families, um, as there's a number of options following the successful completion of our level three qualifications. We're very proud to be able to offer our students the opportunity of progression with us through to higher education degree studies at our university campus at the STEM Centre on Western Way. We offer a well-established uh, three-year BA degree in childhood studies and our students, um, our student numbers, both for um, students that come on from the college or come on from external applications, grows year on year. We like to think this is a good recognition of the positive experience that our students have with us, that they follow us and come on to the degree studies. Um, and the taught content in this stimulating course um, is delivered by industry qualified lecturers. But also through having the benefit of being able to remain at home and continuing employment, which is really important factors for many of our students for a number of reasons. Um, there are a number of course um, that successful employment opportunities that students have following the completion of the course into areas such as primary teaching, um, social work, play therapy, educational consultancy or SEN roles to name just a few. The course is a manual progression, is a natural progression from our level three studies in many of the, many of the modules. Our level three students will explore elements of educational policy, children's health, the well-being, development and safeguarding. And our higher education students continue to explore many of these themes through levels four, five and six. Clearly the primary focus for you is the next step following the summer and I don't want to wish the summer away, but September isn't really that far off. So we'd like our prospective students to know whichever course and whichever level they study with us that will support them um, through that through your time with us. Over to Nicola. 
OK, guys, thank you for listening. And um, we are going to take questions at the end. So please jot down your questions and we'd be happy to answer anything to do with early, early year studies or childcare at the end of the session. OK, so over to um, uh, who's next, Naomi? Hello. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Nicola. I'm actually going to pass it across to uh, two of our team members this afternoon to uh, talk with you about mm. the Health and Social Sciences Department. So that would be me. Hi, guys. Two seconds. I'm just going to share my screen with you. Okie dokie. So we've just got a short video, uh, first and foremost, OK, about our team, and then we're going to talk through some slides for you. Wonderful. So, uh, hi guys, my name is Chloe. Uh, I am the course director for the Working in Health uh, and Care Sector Level 3. Um, so, studying within our department, so studying within health and social science, okay, we will give you uh, fantastic skills and knowledge to work in the health and social care sector. You'll be given the chance to improve, improve your personal skills uh, whilst providing you with employment preparation opportunities. Uh, so we have professional vocational staff members, OK, so who have and currently work uh, in the NHS. So we've got a midwife, we've got a physiotherapist, uh, mental health professionals uh, for sort of a real life insight uh, into what the career is like. So guys, we also uh, take part in community projects. OK, so we actively take part in these uh, community and charity projects. Uh, we've worked with the Prisoners Educational Trust, Spurgeon's Children's Charity, Julian Support, OK, to fundraise uh, and donate food parcels uh, and money. OK, this is all student focused and student planned as well. Um, and then lastly from me, uh, so SCOPE, it's it's our workplace skills and careers programme, OK? Students get to develop their workplace skills, get careers advice, uh, complete work placements. We put you on sign language courses, first aid courses. Um, all of our students engaged in this, OK? Uh, and we have an amazing, amazing partnership with West Suffolk Hospital. Uh, and this is completely unique to our department, OK? The West Suffolk College Health and Social Sciences Department. Um, and that and that is all from me. Thank you. I'm going to pass over to Arcee, who's going to talk about these next few slides. OK. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Arcee. I'm the course director for Health and Social Care Level 3 course. I would like to briefly tell to briefly tell you about what we offer and what we what makes our health and social care courses so special. So basically what extras we offer. So one of the things that the students love about our courses are the educational trips we offer. So we offer lots of educational trips throughout the year. Some of them are in the, in the UK, some of them are in other countries. Basically, they are very unique and fun learning uh, opportunities and experience for our students. Um, um, in addition to, oh, sorry, I need to go to the next slide. Thank you. Um, so not only we care about your uh, college journey, but we also care about uh, what's happening after you finish uh, your courses here with us at the college. So we are we offer loads of uh, progression support and we all we kind of support you to uh, um, reach your career goals. Um, so our students can do loads of career, loads of careers opportunities available. The possibilities are endless. So some of the careers are uh, um, some examples of careers could be paramedic, midwifery, uh, nursing, different kind of nursing, um, social worker. As I said, loads of different opportunities. Uh, 
Um, so as you watch in the video, we offer courses level one to level three, uh, loads of support. Uh, uh, we also develop, try to develop our students' ca uh, character strengths. Um, so then we offer loads of extras, educational trips, uh, guest speakers, uh, events, conferences. So we try to support you in every way possible. Um, if you need more information about our courses, about the content, the units, work placement, uh, you can use this link on the slide. There is a 45 minutes video uh, which kind of covers all health and social sciences Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, okay. Artie. And then we're passing across to Sarah now. Hi everybody, good evening. My name's Sarah and I'm Head of Animal Studies at West Suffolk College. Um, I just wanted to have a quick chat to you today just to inform you about the courses that we run over in the Animal Studies Centre. We are based at the college's main site in Bury St Edmunds now um, and we have a lovely animal centre. If you haven't already, we have a fantastic Facebook page. If you just go on Facebook and type in WSC Animal Studies um, or if you go on Instagram with the same um, username, you'll be able to find us on there and have a look at our amazing animal centre. Um, we have a fantastic range of species as well from um, African striped grass mice right through to Amazonian milk frogs. Um, so we do have a really good range of different species for you to work with. Um, we're really busy training the next generation of veterinary nurses, zookeepers, kennel assistants, pet shop workers, um, even uh, wildlife photographers so it's really varied industry. Um, we run courses from level one right up to level three and we run technical qualifications so that means we have exams and synoptic assessments attached to those um, but it's nothing to worry about because we make sure you're fully prepared before you take those. Um, we do run a variety of trips as well we're actually hopefully going to Honduras in June I think pandemic depending um, and we take the students on a two-week research expedition where we spend one week in the cloud forests of Kasuko National Park. Uh, part of the students job while we're there is to data collect. We'll be looking at mammals, birds, insects, reptiles and amphibians. Um, our second week is on the island of Roatan which is absolutely beautiful. It looks like a postcard. It's amazing um, and part of our job while we're there is coral reef ecology and, and the students will actually be learning their paddy diving qualifications while they're there. I haven't quite got mine yet because I kept panicking with my mask underwater uh, but I'll try again this year. Um, we also do trips to Holland uh, where we do five zoos in five days um, and we're hoping to plan a trip to South Africa as well so we're trying to go as, as all over the place as we can. Um, we've got an exciting partnership with Banham Zoo on the cards as well. So our students next year will have the opportunity to go to visit Banham Zoo regularly and undertake regular work experience with them too. Um, work experience is a really big integral part of all of our courses with 150 hours required. Um, that sounds like an awful lot, but it's only 20 days if you worked full time. So spread throughout the year is no problem at all. And we do have um, work experience coordinators that can support you with that as well. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, that's all I have to say today if you want to have a look at our animal center and meet my fantastic team if you just head over to Facebook we've been doing some really cheesy videos throughout all of lockdown so there's actually 11 hours worth of content so I don't want to bore you too much more today. Thank you Sarah and we're just passing across to Anthony now. All right. Hello good, good evening my name's Anthony Harvey I'm the head of sport at West Suffolk College. Uh, I'm not sure I can compete with Honduras uh, I can't promise you we're going to go to a trip to Honduras. I can probably promise you they're going to get to see the rest of my head in September <laughs> when, you come, when you come to see us. For some reason, half my head's disappearing. Um, but I wanted, what I wanted to talk to you about today was the different sports courses we have on offer. Because we have a wide range of different sports provisions and we've got a lot of different programmes depending on your career pathway, which pathway, which route you want to go down. And all of our vocational programmes are focused around allowing you to take that next step, allowing you to take that next move, whether that next move is to go into uh, education, to go into higher education, or whether it's to go into the workplace. We're, re we're really strong on developing you vocationally and ensuring that not only do you have this educational knowledge when you leave us here at West Suffolk College, but you then also have industry experience, industry contacts when you leave here. So our level three working in sport program, for example, we work very closely with Premier Sport, and what you'll do your education study here with us at West Suffolk College and you'll then engage in paid work placement with Premier Sport alongside that. Our level three sport and exercise science program, you're actively involved in fitness testing, fitness training of sports teams within the local clubs, local area, sorry, you'll be doing physiological testing on Berry Town, 
physiological testing on Walsham. So you've got some real hands on experience there, which you can take forward in, either into the workplace or into higher education. We've got a brand new Berrytown Football Academy, which is coming under us uh, this year. You're going to get trained by some highly, highly skilled coaches. Ben Chenery is uh, Berrytown manager. He is our head of football at West Suffolk College. Joseph Yaxley is UA for B qualified coach. These will be uh, coaching you whilst you're on part of the programme and you'll be getting the academic side here. We are an outstanding department. We're an outstanding department vocationally and educationally. So why not come to us and uh, develop yourself educationally? Uh, what we offer a level three sports coaching program. So our level three sports coaching program again works closely with uh, Premier Sport. It works closely with a, a company called Lynx Fitness, where you'll be getting hands on coaching experience. You can go and do some coaching and gain some work experience over at Berry Town, at Berry Rugby Club. These are high, high skilled and high profile clubs in the region and you'll get to do some hands on coaching there. We have a brand new level three provision starting up next year, which is a level three in fitness training and testing. But that will happen upon completion of one of your other programs. We offer level two provisions. Basically, we offer it all. I can keep talking for, for ages. There's loads of which we can offer. So no matter what pathway you want to go down, we'll, offer, we'll essentially offer that. We have highly, like I keep saying, vocationally relevant stuff. OK, we have people still within the industry, vocationally relevant. We've got Ben, head of football, Berry Town manager. We've got people that still play, people that still coach. We've got one of our teaching staff is the top 10 fitness instructors in the country. Why would you not want to be taught by somebody like that? OK, so not only do we have some highly skilled, qualified people in the vocational field, Educationally, we've got it all made as well. OK, there's four of us with master's qualifications and above two of us which are undertaking their PhDs. So we've got all bases covered over here in the sports department. So apply in September, you'll get to see the rest of my head and you'll then get to be <laughs> taught by some highly skilled and highly qualified people. Over this to you is now, what Andy. happens. This is what happens when you have to trump Honduras, isn't it? <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's what happens when you have to trump Honduras. We've got lots of questions, guys. We're going to try and answer your questions this evening. So uh, I'm going to obviously um, uh, pass them around. So um, uh, when do we find out our, about our days and times at, uh, for September? That's something that unfortunately we can't deliver very early on on any of our programmes. It takes a little while for us to make plans and preparation for that one. Um, so unfortunately, we 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 may be able to give that information on an individual basis but generally that's something that we can't do until later in the summer terms um uh, interested in becoming a primary school teacher uh would any of these courses lead to that nicola do you want to pick up on that one yes yeah, certainly so we have our national extended diploma um that's our btech level three course that would lead you into primary education or we have our really new and exciting t level level three childcare and education that would lead you into becoming a primary school teacher as well. So both of those courses would give you the qualifications you need to go to university to then train as a primary school teacher. Thank you. Um, will I need DBS check? Do I have to pay for this? Um, uh, with this one, I'm just going to pick it up. I think it's different depending on different departments. Am I right? Uh, some departments, if it is a part of your uh, your course and you need to have it, it will be uh, paid for for you, but it will depend on which course that you have joined for that. So if you need a DBS and it's a, a requirement for your course, we do do fund that one. Uh, what pathway is right for me to, if I want to go become a nurse? Artie, do you want to pick up on that one? Yeah, so you can do our health and social care level three course, and then basically this is a two year course. So if you uh, uh, so this is kind of a natural progression, so you can do a second two, two years in total, and then we cover loads of interesting units such as human lifespan development, physiological disorder, which obviously uh, prepare you to do a nursing course. And then after that, you uh, lose of our students basically are now applying year two students are now applying to do a nursing course. So I think our level three health and social care, uh, social care course would be the best option for you. Um, so the next one, Sarah, do you want to pick up on that one? Uh, do I have to come in for an interview? 
Yeah, sure. Um, obviously, at the moment, no, you don't have to physically come in in person for an interview, but we do like to give you a telephone call and have an interview with you over the phone. Um, whilst it's not as personal because you can't get to see us, um, it's important to keep each other safe. So we do undertake them over the phone. It's really nothing to worry about. It'll only take about five or ten minutes of your time. And it's a fantastic opportunity for you to ask us questions as well. So write us down some questions and do ask us when you call when we call you. OK, now the next one I think we all probably want to answer because we all have different things here. Anthony, do you want to pick it up for uniform? Do I have to pay for a uniform? Uh, yes, is the answer to that. Yes, potentially. If you come to do one of our sports programmes, we do offer different sports kits and we offer they offer a, a, a different range depending on what programme you want to come on. If you want to be part of our Berrytown Football Academy, there is an additional charge for that, which includes your full Berrytown training kit, etc. If you want to come on to one of our other sports programs, there is some practical sports kit that is that is required and that stems from tracksuit bottoms and a T-shirt or you can then buy additional um, clothing on top of that. So it's really just dependent on what program you're on and what items of clothing you'd like, really. Sarah, you have something different? Yeah, so when you work in the animal centre with the animals, not only is it important for us to protect you, but we have to be really mindful of biosecurity, which basically means we need to stop any diseases coming into the animal centre and making my animals sick. Um, so we ask you to wear a veterinary style tunic. Um, we have male and female ones, and you would order that through a company and would give you the details for that in our joining instructions. Um, and we also ask you to wear a separate pair of shoes in the animal centre. Um, generally, students wear steel toe cap boots, but we you don't, they don't have to be still toe capped. Um, some students wear Doc Martens. Um, I'm quite flexible as long as they're completely separate to what you would wear around the campus. That's all we ask for in the Animal Centre. Excellent. Um, and again, Nicola with that one. Yes, so with us, you would just need to have your T-shirts for you to go into your work placement that just um, safeguard you really and for the setting to just say that you are a student from West Suffolk College. So they are something that you can purchase from us. They're usually about £12 each, um, but we usually advise you just to buy a couple of those T-shirts, but that isn't until you start your actual work placement. But we do not require you to wear them in college, only in your work placement once you start them. Thank you. And it's very similar for the health and social sciences. Uh, the students buy a tunic for when they're starting their placement. So it's um, a fairly straightforward with that one. Um, the courses are assessed. I'm just going to pick that one up. The courses are all assessed slightly differently, but they all have uh, elements of exam uh, based at level three or above. Some of the level twos also have them. So depending on which course you have, they will have some exam elements and some coursework elements, but they're all individual so it would um, be if you would like to ask about specific courses in terms of assessment please do but we do have a mixture of both coursework based uh, programs and coursework with some examination base as well in that um, the next question oh thank you very much Sarah for answering that one about the the veterinary nurse that's really helpful thank you um, there's another one here for sport uh, what sport do you cover wow um so we offer as part of a, as part of your sports programs you'll undertake loads of different sports uh, and you'll be trying different sports and perhaps doing different sports that you haven't done before alongside us as a academic provision we do also have our sports academies and uh, we've got a sports academy in football we've got a sports academy in rugby and one in netball and these will run alongside us as an academic provision. You'll get training by some highly qualified coaches and then you get to play your matches on a Wednesday. That runs alongside us as a teaching element and you do not need to be doing a sports course necessarily to take part in our sports academies. In terms of the sports we do as part of our assessments and part of the programme, we do a wide range of different sports that cater for all different needs. So what, what sports do you cover? Pretty much all of them. I suppose answers that one. Uh, and then, Excellent. sorry, I'm going to jump in, Naomi. I'll do the next one For as the well. the coaching one. Thank yeah, you. I want to become a coach. What coaches, uh, what courses is, is correct for me? We actually offer a uh, level three program in sports coaching and development. So the level three sports coaching program looks at self-employment. It looks at sports coaching as a as a unit. You do coaching practices and then advanced coaching skills as part of the modules. So. 
that would be that would be the academic side in terms of uh, which program you want to do, which suit you towards being a coach. Alongside that, we offer different coaching qualifications as well, which run alongside the program. So level one football coaching qualification, for example, which is run alongside us as the academic provision. Excellent. Thank you. We've got a question here about um, uh, educational visits. So educational visits are optional so they are optional for students to attend them uh, we do occasionally have something where we want to take you to something specific as a part of our educational setup but generally they're they're optional particularly residential um, activities um, i'm just trying to see where we've got up to uh, uh, what is a good course for radiotherapy and physiotherapy again the uh, we have the health and social care health science pathway that really strongly promotes that particularly for radiography um, and physiotherapy, although some students do quite passionate about sport and they're looking at physiotherapy to consider looking at the sport and exercise sciences for that one as well. So that tends to be the two choices when it comes to that. But for radio for radiography, I think Anthony, you would agree they'd be better with the um, health science pathway. I, I think, yeah, 100%. If we're looking at radiography, uh, then the, the health pathway is a much better option. Physiotherapy, then it depends which kind of field you want to go down. So the health program or one of the, or the level three sport and exercise science pathway would help you with physiotherapy. So yeah, I'll, what Naomi said is correct. Thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> um, good, yeah. What kind of jobs can you get with a sport qualification, Anthony? Okay, um, well, what sort of job do you want? We can make any job work for you here. So. <laughs> Um, we have our, our sports programs. We do an abundance of different modules when we're on our different sports programs. So again, it really depends on what you're interested in and your career goals and your career focus. If you're interested in sports nutrition, we can then uh, drill down on that one and take that as your pathway and look at how we can develop that for a potential job. We've got sports coaching. We've mentioned sports uh, physiotherapy, so sports therapy. Uh, PE teaching, sports coaching, I've, I've said that. It, it, we can go down a wide range. Our students go to university to look at sports management, to look at sports psychology, to look at sports nutrition, to go and do sport and exercise science at university, to go into PE teaching. It really depends on what it is that you're interested in and your future career goals. So what kind of jobs can I get? You can get anything. But as with all of our courses here in this department, you have to work for them. OK, you have to work hard to get your qualifications. You could get the equivalent on our level three programs. You can get the equivalency of three A stars at A level. You're not just give, get, given three A stars at A level. You have to work hard for that. OK, you, we are we are all academic programs. And we all do, do deliver academic provisions. I'm not giving away my qualifications for taking part in sport. What the qualifications are for is engaging and relating that information to uh, sport and practice and the sport and provision. That then will obviously help lead you to achieve your, your job roles. And, and the aim of all of us here at West Suffolk College is that when you apply for a job, when an employer sees that you've been at West Suffolk College and you've uh, completed a course at West Suffolk College, that CV comes to the top of the pile. Uh, so we'd like to think that you come in here and come into the best academic provision in the region means that you're already at an advantage for getting whichever job you want to get. Oh, sorry, you. sorry, I carried on talking too long then. Naomi, over to you, back. That's, no, that's absolutely fine. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. Um, and the last question was about the amount of theory in a sports course. You're getting lots of difficult okay. ones this evening. So we're, we're slightly different to those people that are undertaking GCCPE. As, as I keep saying, we are an academic provision. OK, so our focus is on developing you as academics rather than you, rather than developing you as sports practitioners. We probably spend about an hour to an hour and a half a week doing practical. The rest of it will be theory, theory work. So a lot of it is classroom based, but that doesn't mean to say that it's you sitting down listening to us talk at you all the time. OK, we want to be out and about. We want to be as active and as, and as engaging as we can. So there will be activities. There'll be some bits and pieces involved in that, but you can get three A stars at A level. Yes, yeah? so we need to teach you. We need to we need to make sure that we get the academic side across. So we are we are a theory based course as opposed to a practical based course. You can get a lot lots of practical side if you take part of us in our sports academies where you can do all the training sessions and the match days experiences alongside that. 
Thank you. I'm just going to see if we've got any any last questions. We've been really um, thank you so much, everybody who's uh, with us this evening. We've had lots and lots of questions today. Um, we've got one last question. Uh, what do I have to work for health? Sorry, where do I have to work for health and social? So with that one, we have a large number of different type of um, work placement opportunities for you and that again we try to fit that very much to the individual so, so we've got for example this year some students who are working in a food bank some students are actually helping to do lateral flow testing which is obviously very current at the moment um, we have students who are able to go into special educational uh, settings some many students are very keen to go into workplace within our medical area uh, we have some GP practices that are taking some students as well this year and um, obviously the hospital is a very popular place for our students but we work very closely with individual students to actually fit that to their longer term interest because because it is quite a wide and diverse topic matter uh, different people have different interests but we do try to obviously give you the opportunity to do what um, you are particularly focused on. Any other questions? There's one more about childcare, Nicola. Just what's what's the first day um, like for childcare? Sorry, what's where, what's the first day like? Yes. Okay, so um, okay, when you join us at the college, um, we actually welcome you into your course and um, get you to become part of the group and to get to know your um your group members uh, in your class um, but we would start to introduce you to the course and talk you through what's expected of you and um, explain all the different elements to the course so all the modules that are involved in the course we would explain everything to you we would give you your timetables and explain your day and how your weeks run and how it's split up and you'll be with us for um, a, a, about a month before you actually start in the work placement. So then your week will become three days in college and two days in the work placement if you're on a level two or three course. So if you're level two or three, you will then eventually become three days in college, two days in the workplace that we support you to find. Angela Jarrett, our work placement coordinating officer, helps you to find that placement. Um, with the level um, one course, that's um, for three days a week, and you will be taught all the basics around childcare, and that would then lead you into supporting you to go on to level two and level three after. And you will also be gaining lots of different experiences as Natasia explained, explained to you, like to do with charity work and different projects that you can do. So we'd really spend time introducing you into every part of the course and making sure it's right for you so that we can move you if you're not happy and you don't feel comfortable you think you've made a wrong decision or we might say to you actually you've started on level one but we actually can see that you can go on to level two you don't need to be on level one so we look at you as an individual and we walk you through that path and lead you into the right course that's right for you as an individual thank you I finally have a question. I'm, I'm quite grateful. I feel like the reason I don't have loads of questions is probably because I don't have time, much time to answer them because Mr Harvey's been talking constantly, but also because I make lots of videos. So there's lots of information available about all of my stuff anyway. Um, but somebody's asked me um, what kind of animals we have in the animal centre. Um, and that's like I would bore you all to death because we have over 200 in the animal centre. Um, we have lots of different rooms that house different species. So we've got our main mammal and bird room where we've got loads of different mammals, including exotic mammals like um, African pygmy dormice, jerds, jaboas. Um, we also have um, a variety of different birds. We've got some rosy borks. We've got some kakarikis. Um, we also then have our nocturnal room. Um, in, in there, we've got some sugar gliders and some Gambian pouch rats, which are giant rats 
and they use them in the army to sniff out IEDs. They're very, very intelligent. And um, we've also got our exotic stream where we've got five different species of tarantula because that is one of my favourite things, sorry. Um, we've also got lots of different species of snake. Um, we've got lots of different species of lizards. We've got loads of different invertebrates, giant land snails. Um, scorpions, loads of cool things. Soon to have more fish. Um, I'm getting some new tanks hopefully over the summer. So I'm going to have some marine set up, some brackish set up because I'm a mas massive fish geek as well. So I can't wait to have those. Um, and then we've got our goats outside as well. So we've got six different goats. We've got three African pygmy goats and we've got three golden Guernsey goats. Uh, oh, and two ducks. We've got two Indian runner ducks. Mustn't forget those because they're Layla's favourite. So, yeah, we've got quite an extensive uh, selection of things, um, but you don't have to handle them if you don't like them. I get asked that a lot. Do I have to hold a tarantula? I'm not going to make you, but it would be cool if you set it as a target. Not on my target list. <laughs> Uh, thank you everybody um, for joining us this evening. I hope it has been valuable for you. I think we've managed to answer all your questions, but if you have other questions, um, you can post them uh, after this as well. Um, thank you everybody. Good evening and have a good holiday. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.